Hello and welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And David, I'm almost scared to ask, what have we got on this week's Hi-Fi Riff? I think this is uh, one of the most bonkers speakers I've ever seen. (laughs) And that's even by my standards. Uh, Which is pretty (laughs) bonkers. We've had some fairly bonkers products over the last year on Riff, haven't we? But I think this is right at the top of the tree, isn't it? Yes. (laughs) On the (laughs) bonkersometer, we're (laughs) we're nudging 10, I think. We we are really, really close to a 10. And look, before I came over to your lovely place here in Wiltshire... Um, I'd never even heard of these before, let alone seen a pair. I thought you were going to say never heard of Wiltshire. Had never heard of Wiltshire <laughs> either. No, no, exactly. Why would why would why would I need to? He's from, he's he's from he's a posho from Oxfordshire. Uh, Oxfordshire, darling. Yeah, yeah. Well, not Wiltshire. Absolutely. No, quite. So look, I'd never even heard of, never seen them. Would you like to just uh, just introduce what we're talking about here? This is I've got one too. Okay, what are they? Now, if anyone, yeah. this would be like like the the geek of the year award if yeah. somebody actually knew what these were. So, uh, um, anyone who knows what they are will have read the title of this video. That's very true. <laughs> so we can't really surprise it on you. But um, no, these are um, in the UK. These were known as the Realistic Optimus Pro LX5. So it has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? So um, Realistic were yeah. the sort of the, the trade name of of speakers from. Tandy. Tandy. Or if you're an American, we have actually have American viewers as well. You'll know that as Radio Shack. Yes. Now, Tandy's no more. It hasn't been here for a while now, has it? Which is a great shame. Um, Yes, I'm I'm crying every day about that. Oh, I used to like (laughs) Tandy. I used to like going into Tandy because it had all sorts of really random weird things. (laughs) It's like these. What, like you? (laughs) It's like these. Yeah, random and weird. These look like... um, you know when you have like a traffic accident and you have those little sort of orange, orange lights which flash on top? That's just what they look like, isn't it? How so dare you, like, Mike? These are, <laughs> this is quality audiophile gear, this is. It, well, I'm, I'm so. frightened to say that actually it is. It is, yeah. It is. Um, yeah. And it's the most, in the most random and bizarre way. So, yes. Um, just... Just tell us a little bit more about yes. what's going on in here because yes. it, it's, it's, it's got a party trick, hasn't it? It, it has. So... Um, it's got a um, well. Basically, it's, let's start the, with the, the at the beginning. It's got a uh, a metal uh, uh, cabinet, basically, uh, which is quite cold at the moment, to, freezing to, to the touch. Um, and in that is a, uh, a sort of fairly standard uh, mid bass drive unit, polypropylene, uh, which you know most speakers uh, of the of the eighties uh, 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 and nineties had actually. Um, and uh, it's ported, so it's got twin front-firing base ports, as you can see there, which is good as far as I'm concerned. Front-firing is better than rear-firing in terms of getting the speaker to work in the room. Um, and uh, But on top is what counts, and you can probably see that. Um, it says Linnaeum, um, and uh, I'm not sure if I pronounced that absolutely perfectly, but it is a special tweeter. It's a dipole tweeter. Um, and uh, it's quite hard to describe without taking a case off, which I can't. But basically, um, if you want to put on your white coat and get your pens in your top pocket, it's it's geek. It's geek. Thirty seconds of geekdom. Um, it's got a um, uh, the, a voice call on the tweeter is flattened vertically, and it's suspended between opposed rectangular magnets. Um, which are on either side of the uh, either side of the uh, sheets of mylar, um, uh, mylar film being the kind of stuff they use on electrostatics. So it's it's not an electrostatic, but it has similar properties. Basically, the thing that moves air is a sheet of uh, basically cling film. Cling film, I was going to say. <laughs> yes. So yeah, yeah. plastic um, wrap. Yes, if you're uh, in exactly. The UK. Exactly that, and um, so uh, you know it excites the air by. Um, uh, by rotating back and forth, and it radiates from the front and the back, so it's a dipolar. Yeah, I beg your pardon. <laughs> isn't, isn't that a form of depression? <laughs> and then you listen to these, and you're happy. Exactly, again. you're happy. Yeah. So um, Linnaeum was basically the name of a, I think, I believe, an American drive unit manufacturer. I think based in Oregon, uh, which would be Portland, Portland, Oregon, well, maybe. I don't okay. know. So certainly in, in Oregon, anyway. 
Sure. Um, and it was uh, Radio Shack or Tandy or whoever you want to call, um, basically bought these drive units and shipped them to Malaysia where they were put into this speaker box with this drive unit. Uh, and they were sold, I think, in the States as Genexa LX5s um, and in the UK as re Realistic uh, Optimus Pro. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a very, very odd thing. Uh, it was done, I think, in 1995. They first came out. Um, and it it sounds like a kind of electrostatic with a with a subwoofer. It really does. <laughs> it, but it's but exactly shrunk in the wash. It's basically. exactly what it sounds yeah. like. Um, they're they're remarkable. Yeah. They're really solid. They're really yeah. well made. Properly made speakers. I mean, but why would anybody have bought them? They'd have been totally off people's radar. Yeah. They've never been reviewed. They, you know, you go into sort of Tandy or Radio Shack and you go, they look weird. Yeah. You know, and they can't be any good because they're too tiny and all yeah. this stuff. And they're just fantastic. Yes. Aren't they? And can I just ask, uh, how on earth did you find out about them? Well, I was in Japan uh, in the 90s when they came out and they were distributed through one of the main hi-fi retail chains, I think. I can't remember what it was, but I remember seeing them in, in some hi-fi shop somewhere. And, and all I remember, because I was walking past and I just remember thinking the treble is really nice. <laughs> so yeah, And you, you were know, right. Yeah. So it was, you know, there's a lot of really nasty, kind of crashy, bangy sounding speakers, especially back then. Especially in Tandy. Yeah. Well, it wasn't a Tandy uh, Japan, but it was just no, a sure, Japanese sure. retail chain. But as you say, yeah, in Tandy, uh, generally, their, their speakers weren't famous for being good, very refined. <laughs> no, no. Um, and um, yeah, so I remember hearing this and kind of being drawn back to it and then looking at it and saying, oh my God, what's that? You know? Yes. Um, so there we go. But they weren't that expensive either. I don't know the exact UK retail price, but I think they were around 150 quid or something like that. Um, well, so I've, I've done a bit of eBay research. Yeah. And there, there have been two pairs of these yeah. come up on eBay in the last six months or so. Wow. And the most expensive pair sold for £26. <laughs> uh, so that, that, that was you, was it? Well, I yeah. wish it was. Yeah. In fact, this riff... Um, this riff will not go public until I've, I've found myself a pair on eBay. So um, it may be a while before we release this one. Yes, yeah, so um, this will be coming out in 2027. <laughs> yeah, that's right, next time somebody sells a pair <laughs> of these. Um, because they're magnificent. And, and in terms of the sound, they, you know, they're really... Like, I know what you just said is, is a, you know, a bit tongue-in-cheek, but it's right. It's, it's, yeah. They're like a you know, sort of mini electrostatic with a, with a subwoofer. Yeah. Um, so they're really open. They're yeah. really clear. They've got a really beguiling top end. This these yeah. this sort of amazing sort of uh, you know dipole setup just sounds crystal clear. Um, and do you know what? Actually, I know you said it's just a sort of fairly generic mid bass driver, but it doesn't half do a bad job, does no. it? It's it's no. pretty. It's really pretty decent. Yeah. Um, you'd be amazed how much sort of uh, bottom end you actually get from these little little packages. Yes. Yeah. In terms of ease ease of driving, hell. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So, um, it basically, yes. your exposure one, two, three, four, five, uh, tri amps, you know, with extra power supplies would struggle to drive it by. If, if you've got, um, so, the, but it fits in with your budget, doesn't it? So you spend yeah. ten thousand pounds on your amplifier, twenty four pound on eBay for your speakers, and there you go, you've got enough grunt to drive it as long as you're hardwired into the national grid. Yes. Well, I think they've got similar sensitivity to to isobarics. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So um, they're at 83 dB quoted sensitivity. Um, and uh, as, I, as I know from working at Hi-Fi World, where we used to measure every speaker that we, uh, we got in uh, for sensitivity, they'd always quote, you know, 88, and it would be 85, you sure, know, sure. or 86 or something. It all, manufacturers would always overestimate that sensitivity. And so these are probably worse than that. They're <laughs> probably about 80 or 81. Um, so you do need a powerful amp. Yes. Um, I would say a minimum of a hundred watts. So For these uh, tiny little <laughs> things, that's so, mad, isn't it? But we yeah. we use them uh, in my system with my Sony TAN eighty six, which is I think is about a hundred watts. Uh, yes. uh, it went in in class A A B mode. Um, so 
And and actually, they made a, a, a very nice room filling sound. Amazing, amazing. They're so, really, really beguiling. Yeah. I, I, I'm a hundred percent taken yeah. with these. I'm also taken with the fact that they're a real curio. Yeah, you know, they're really unusual. I've never quite seen anything like it. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's it's just a just a, a fantastic thing. Yeah. So um, and we played again sort of different kinds of music, different genres. You know, we've been comparing all sorts of different things today. So uh, we listened to some craft work and some. Um, uh, micro Disney, absolutely, uh, yeah. and again, all sounding really, really lovely. Sort of really, yeah. that sort of really open, sort yeah. of sweet sound, imaging beautifully. Yeah. I mean, they were uh, they were great on craft work. They were they? brilliant, on craft really work. atmospheric. Yes, um, in in a quite a large listening room. Um, we actually for this. Uh, purposes of listening today had them perched on top of my NS1000. We did, we did. Well, it's quite uh, hard to find stands for something like that. They'd be too yeah. small for even for yeah, can stands. Absolutely. They? So, but they, 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 because you know the the treble dispersion is so good, you don't need to have the tweeters at ear level. No. Uh, so you know they're not kind of firing right at you, as it were. No, sure. Uh, but they, they had a, a wonderfully kind of large and ethereal sound. Yes. Uh, admittedly, that's when a good word, actually, pumping, that's what like. yeah, pumping, yeah. pumping large amounts of volume into the room, obviously. Um, but um, yeah, very, very open and, and spacious. And it's it sort of, and the interesting thing is that they're very small, obviously, but because the way the treble, the tweeter behaves, um, it just propagates everything around, doesn't it? Yes. So it fills the room much better than you'd expect from a conventional speaker of this size with a little dome tweeter. Yeah. It's firing out. No, absolutely. So. And, and a, a sort of bit of full disclosure here as well. Um, and I can tell you this uh, for nothing. David. Uh, only reserves his favourite speakers to be looked at by Anna Peach Audio, who we've talked about before. Yeah. Um, so these ones have also been been tweaked a little bit by Anna Peach. There we and, go. And, There's and, a sticker and, on the back. And that... I'll tell you something. If um, if David didn't think these were amazing, he certainly wouldn't have spent his hard earned cash on getting Anna Peach to tweak them. Yeah. Um, and and they put some different, slightly different binding posts in the back. I think. Yeah. They? I think I think he put um, he I think I can't remember, but I think the original had spring type connectors sounds um, about right my i've had some realistic yeah, speakers once yeah. and they had those um so he modified those we put some uh really nice i think it was actually russ andrew's kimber cable kimber speaker oh, yes, cable okay. internal okay. speaker cable wiring which was not cheap yeah um and um i think it's got some fancy solon capacitors in it uh, as well uh, an additional kind of um damping material in in the base uh, section obviously you take the base driver out and, um, and dump the inside of the cabinet. I'm, I'm smiling um, because I, I can just imagine, you know, the team at Anna Peach going, oh, what, an, <laughs> what are you doing yeah. these? Is this April it's, the 1st? Because they would <laughs> never have seen a pair of these before. Yeah. I am 100% yeah. confident of that. Um, but they've done a great job, but that's not taking anything away from the fact that, you know, a standard pair was so good that it warranted you, you popping them into Anna Peach and getting them tweaked. Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, you know, if you can get a fully working... Uh, pair, um, uh, then you know it's going to be not much money at all. It's well worth spending a couple of hundred quid, uh, getting uh, you know getting all the audiophile treatment done on them, um, and they they're lovely. And we they've got a very kind of musical, fluid sort of sound. It, it's very spacious. It propagates around the room really nicely. The bass is a little bit sort of um, not boomy, but it's kind of plump, isn't it? At a, um, many, a little bit. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, a lot of small speakers, um, manufacturers tend to engineer a slight sort of bass peak in, in the upper bass, obviously, because they, you know, there's no there's no, a low, no lower bass. Um, so sometimes they can have a slight lumpy upper bass. Uh, and and that's, I think that's true here. But it gives them a bit more scale. Uh, and then you've got that amazing sort of airy, airy spacious tweeter uh, radiating everything around. And then if your car breaks down, you could put a little orange light on top and you could pop it next to your car and no one will bump into you when you're broken <laughs> down by the side of the road in your TR7. Yeah. So, you know, no, yes. no wonder you've got two of them. <laughs> well, I was almost thinking about putting them on the back shelf of the TR7. It'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? It'd be absolutely brilliant. It'd be the world's greatest yes. car speaker, yeah. wouldn't it? So. Do you know, I was thinking, actually, you know the little Edwards Audio amp, which we, which we did the riff yeah. on recently? Yeah. But these would be perfect to go with the Edwards Audio amp um, and sort of you know, next to your computer, you'd have the best sounding computer system yes. ever. Except yeah. I'm not sure Kevin Edwards audio amp would quite um, <laughs> quite drive these. No. He probably needs a, a little bit more grunt than that. Yeah. But, um, 
But no, these are amazing, absolutely yeah. amazing. So look, I mean, this has got to be hi-fi bargain of the century. If you can pick up a pair of these like the last two buyers did on eBay for less than 25 quid, then that is just ridiculous, isn't yes. it? It's proper hi-fi for no money. So um, ju just to prove that Mike has been completely sincere in what he says... So as soon as I played them to him, he was straight on his That's phone. Like on phone. EBay. I was. <laughs> so I was. Search, I so. want some. I'm, I'm um, very. I'm coveting. I'm very jealous. So I think he's. Uh, I think he's a happy camper. Yeah, no, they're lot. brilliant. I do. I do. So. And and so let's do a let's do a reformator. Yeah. So uh, obviously a retro reformator now, yes, but yeah. um, I'm going to give them nine and a half um, for being so bonkers. Yes. Um, really good quality, interesting design. Uh, like nothing else, like no other speaker, because um, I don't know any other speakers that have used this this dipole tweeter, um, and um, uh, you know they were so cheap when they were new as well. Yes, so it's yeah. crazy. It's yes. crazy. No, it is. Yeah, absolutely bonkers. You know, once in a once in a blue moon, we we you know you find these little amazing hidden gems which I've never even seen or heard of before. Um, but look, I tell you what, I'm going to give them the ten simply because wow. if you can pick up a pair of these for twenty five quid, then you've got high five bargain of the century. Yeah. Well, so. unfortunately, viewers may not be able to now because Mike will have them, buy them all. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be uh, when I go but go to your house in a year's time. There'll be like ten of them all, 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 with all around. Or orange lights on top. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so brilliant. And look, on yeah. that note, thank you so much for watching this really rather unusual but very special episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. And we look forward very much to seeing you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.